from WFRV-TV, Local 5, serving Northeast Wisconsin, including Green Bay, Fox Cities, and the Lakeshore. This is Newsmaker Sunday. Good morning. Welcome to Newsmaker Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. Well, summer is almost here, and one of the most popular cities in Northeast Wisconsin during these summer months is the Lakeshore community of Manitowoc. And joining us this morning, Manitowoc Mayor, a uh, repeat performance yeah. for us, Mayor Justin Nichols. Good to see you again, Mayor. Thanks Great for coming. Great to be coming. back. Yeah, I love that you do this. Thank you. You uh, have been involved in city politics uh, since you were way back in your <laughs> teenage years. Yeah. So first elected to city council at 18, elected mayor at the age of 22. Take yeah. me back, 18-year-old kid, uh -huh. wanting to get involved in politics when most of us were getting involved in <laughs> things that we shouldn't have gotten yeah. involved in. <laughs> That's true. What was your thinking back then? You know, um, like you just said, Mantuck's a great community and it has so much potential. And when I was 18, I was, I was in high school. I was looking at uh, colleges and what to do. Every single one of my friends moved away. And the attitude back then for a generation plus was, let's get out of Manitowoc. Let's, you know, go to college, find a job elsewhere. There's nothing to do in Manitowoc. Uh, when I was 18, I wanted to change that. And the best way to do that is to get involved. Mm -hmm. And I got elected to the city council, served four years there in Mayor 22. And that's really been my focus. And uh, revitalizing downtown, taking advantage of the lakefront, Lake Michigan, the Manitowoc River, our history, what built our community. Um, really focusing in on those things of, of community, what makes a community. What makes a place where people want to call home and be proud to call home? And for the last decade plus, we've been focusing solely on that. So you're in your early 20s, having already served on city council. What was the trigger that said, I can run this city? <laughs> I question myself then that every day of my life now. Um, you know, it, it really was that, uh, that attitude of we need, we need a shot in the arm here. We need to do something different because the way we are going, we... We, talk, we were talking before the show about Matwa Company and Miro. We saw the major companies that built the community, and thank God we had them, uh, up and leave. And they were shutting down factories, they were eliminating workforce, and what was Matwa becoming? And that's where I thought, hey, I'm the young guy who can, can, can look to the decisions that I have to make because they're going to affect when I retire here someday. What made you think at that age that you could run a city? Because there had to be people in that community going, who does this kid think he is? Yeah, that's, and that, who did you yeah. think you were? Yeah, that was a fair question because we, in Matwak, we don't have a city administrator or manager. Right. The mayor is, is it. Uh, it's a full-time, day-to-day person. Uh, so there were those questions, especially since what I did before, I begged groceries at Cops Grocery <laughs> Store, and, and, and I was on the city council for four years. So really the city council you know, aspect helped me understand the budget, the employees, you know, what, what we do as a community to provide services. Um, but other than that, it was the citizens trusting in me. And mm -hmm. I, I am so thankful for that because obviously I hope it planned out since I'm 14 years 14. later, still in the job. Yeah, give me a report card on, on Mayor Justin Nichols from the city of Manitowoc that you took over yeah. to the city of Manitowoc that you run now 14 years later. Yeah, so 2009, recession, right? Mm -hmm. We're faced with so many challenges. The city had debt way beyond our capacity and our ability to, to repay. We had to make some pretty drastic decisions my first term. That was the focus. We had to get, we had to get city government in line before we could do anything else. Uh, after that, when we finally were able to say, hey, we have money that we can put into parks, into recreation, into quality of life, into our downtown, into our lakefront, uh, we started being able to do that responsibly, fiscally responsibly. And a lot of the things that have changed is we didn't become that a two company town, Manitowoc Company and Mural. Uh, we became a town that has had a city that has a plethora of businesses that are thriving now. Some that have been in the community for 100 plus years, like Wisconsin Aluminum Foundry, Lakeside Foods, that were kind of forgotten off the wayside when, when Manitowoc Company and Mural were here, but now are our largest and most thriving businesses. Mm -hmm. And we, we changed our mentality. We want to help local businesses, we want to attract. But in order to do that, we have to, be, we have to create a community that they want to stay in and that employees want to move to. Uh, I think that's what we're doing. If you look at our downtown, if you look at our community today, it's going through a renaissance. 
I think this is a new era for Manitowoc, and I think it's a place where people are like, yeah, I want to live there because it looks like a good home. At the top of the show, I said summer months, uh, Manitowoc, the place to be for a lot of people. Yeah. What's bringing folks to your community? Uh, the natural beauty. Yeah. Uh, you know, being on Lake Michigan, being a little cooler sometimes on those days when in the Fox Valley it's uh, 20 yeah. degrees warmer. Uh, you know, the car ferry, the SS Badger just started its season a couple of weeks ago. That brings in a plethora of tourists from Michigan and other places that benefit Door County, Green Bay, Appleton, all the other areas as well. Um, but, you know, our downtown is really what we tried to focus on, making it pedestrian safe, creating an environment where small, unique niche businesses uh, can thrive, which tourists love to, to go to. We changed our brand. Uh, we really wanted to focus on getting out to the tourist, not, hey, come here and we'll tell you everything about us. We put a lot of energy into website, into promoting our area uh, with our Visit Mantuoc brand. So a lot of neat new things, but it's really, it was, it was kind of that emphasis in 2009 that, all right, the, we had a great era in Manitowoc yeah. of what we were, but this is who we want to become, and we're getting there. Manitowoc Mayor Justin Nichols, our guest this morning. We have much more to come, so please stay right there. We are back now with Manitowoc Mayor Justin Nichols. Uh, during your time as mayor, you focused on fiscal responsibility. You focused on debt reduction. What do you mean when you say that? What's your philosophy on that? So uh, we're a business. You know, we're a business of 350 employees. We have a $30 million general fund. You know, we, we have to provide services to the citizens with their money. Um, and so, as I mentioned in 2009, when I was first elected, we had somewhat of a crisis. We had $76 million in debt for a city of you know, 35,000 people, uh, we, and we were going through a recession. We really had to focus on what are the core priorities of a city, safety, roads, you know, and, and quality of life but really focusing on public safety, roads, and the things that are, are required of, of local governments to provide its citizens. Um, but So my philosophy is obviously you've got to balance your budget. That's, mm -hmm. that's number one. Yep. And we have to be responsible with the taxpayer's money. But I also have a philosophy and a belief that we can help create change in a community with the taxpayer's money and create a community, as I've said over and over again, where people want to live, where people want to move into. That's the quality of life aspects, the parks, uh, the, the beautiful flowers downtown. You know, they may not seem like much, but they really do all add up. And that's where I believe the city can be a leader in that. We focused on downtown. We put about $300,000 into facade grants to redo some buildings downtown, you know, make them look better. That was the city's investment. The private investment was $6.5 million. So we saw huge private investment because of, you know, that portion of city money that we wanted to put in to make the community look better. So because of the fiscal uh, responsibility that we had in the early 2010s, we're able to do a lot of this stuff now responsibly. You've uh, revitalized downtown. As with every city, every city seems to have this affordable housing issue. Yes. Where are you on that? Do you have enough? Are you looking to build more? <laughs> Is it frustration? Uh, frustration, yep. and all the above, in fact. We just did a housing study. Housing study basically said we need the most expensive homes you can build to, to the most affordable, cost-efficient ones you can build, and everything in between. Uh, most communities are in the same spot. In Manitowoc, we have a problem where someone who can afford a $750,000 home is buying a five hundred. dollars Someone who can afford a five is buying a four, right? And so it's a push-down effect yeah. where some of these homes that should be for um, lower-income wage earners aren't necessarily out there because just the push-down effect. So we, we have a wide array. We're working with a lot of developers right now uh, to focus in on especially low income and, and affordable housing for the community um, on certain sites like the Muro site, which has been on air for how many decades yeah. now we've yeah. been talking about this. That site we're looking at about 50 plus townhomes that would be workforce housing. Uh, we're looking at renovating some of the old Muro buildings, the old tinsel factory into senior living. Uh, folks who still want to maintain that independence but don't want to pay the property taxes and cut the grass and you know which would be a good thing get those seniors into senior living and have new younger families buy those buy those homes so so that that mural property it's it's been empty since what 03 
it's uh, <laughs> it's so it's, it's it's not forgotten. It's yeah. it's in your plan in some way. Yeah, absolutely. So we tore down the building. I don't know how many years ago now the city did that. The city owns the property. It's really at kind of the heart of where our downtown, where we want our downtown to start. Um, there on the the highway on, on Washington Street, um, which will be redone here in 2028-29. So we can do some things in that area to clean it up and make it more attractive for development. Um, but the mural site's always been a kind of a thorn in our side. Uh, we have a developer now that's interested in working with, and, and we're going out for federal grants. The council has approved um, some dollars to put toward, and hopefully, hopefully this time next year we're seeing a, a shovel in the ground. Mm -hmm. If I'm a business owner in Manitowoc, I'm saying to myself, I am thriving, or my city could do full, more for me. Yeah. Where would I be? If I were talking yep. to the mayor, what would I be saying? Yeah. I do weekly business visits um, with uh, some of my team, community development, our utilities, Progress Lakeshore. We do a, a business visit every week. Uh, the answer is they're thriving. Every single one of our businesses that I know of are thriving, could use more employees. There's a couple of, of hurdles, and one is child care. It's a big issue for a lot of folks, not just in Manitowoc, but in order to, there's a lot of workforce out there if not for child care issues, they could be working. Um, that's one thing that places like Wisconsin Aluminum Foundry, our, our Economic Development Corporation, Progress Lakeshore, Shore are working on uh, to see how we can handle that situation. Um, wages, you know, wages are starting to increase, which is a great, great thing. But then inflation and everything else, yeah. where, where, do you, where do you end up? Uh, to, so to, to recruit folks to move into the area is, is challenging at times um, because of, a lot of different factors, but they need employees. They have the opportunity to to add. We're you know we're adding a FedEx distribution facility, 200 jobs, trucks in and out of the community every day. Right. Uh, those jobs got to come from somewhere. Again, hopefully we are creating a community that's attractive that people want to live in. Manitowoc Mayor Justin Nichols, our guest this morning. We have much more to come with him, so please stay right there. We continue our conversation with Manitowoc Mayor Justin Nichols. You are blessed with being located right there on that lakeshore, right on Lake Michigan. As mayor, do you think that you are taking full advantage of that enviable situation you have <laughs> there, or are you looking to do more there? Uh, always looking to do more. Yeah. Uh, Manitowoc is one of those, I mean, like Green Bay, a lot of the communities that are um, well-established, older communities in the state, that relied on the water for their, their economy, for business. Commerce. Yeah, commerce. And that's what we did for 100 years. Um, and we kind of turned our back from the lake and the river because of that. Uh, over the last decade plus in a lot of, again, a lot of communities, you look at Green Bay's downtown along the river now, much different than what it was 20 years ago. And Matwak is the same because leaders and, and citizens are starting to say, we got to turn back to the water. This is our greatest asset. It's, it's beautiful. Um, let's, let's face the water again. So we're starting to see businesses pop up along the riverfront, waterfront, wine bar, the wharf. You can go down there in summer for bands and everything and just take advantage of the natural beauty. Of course, the Wisconsin Maritime Museum being right on the river uh, and the, the uh, USS Colbia uh, down there. I mentioned the car ferry. But, you know, we're, we, there's a lot more we can do. Uh, we have the beautiful Mariner's Trail that connects Manitowoc and Two Rivers all un, un, uninterrupted uh, view of Lake Michigan. Uh, there's always more we can do. We want to improve our beaches, uh, our parks that are along the lakefront, and we want to continue the trail system all along the Manitowoc River. Uh, it's, it's actually a really beautiful area to go up the Manitowoc River if you're a kayaker. Uh, you can see the industry of past where we built the 28 submarines in World War II, where we're building Kona Crane now is building two big blue cranes, and uh, Broadwind is building towers. You can go right past that, and then just up the river, it feels like you're not even in a city with the forest, the natural beauty, uh, going up to Manitou Park. So that's an entire trail system that we want to eventually um, uh, take advantage of because that's something that will bring people to our community. You uh, mentioned the museum and, and the cobia. I don't know of any child that has not taken that yeah, field trip, right. and I'm sure you did as Absolutely. well when you were a kid. Absolutely. Uh, is, is that still uh, as popular an attraction as it used to be back yeah. in the day? It is. it is. And they're doing new things with it, too. There, there's an Airbnb. You can actually sleep overnight on it. Uh, I know Boy Scouts and a bunch of different school groups do sleep overnight on it a lot. 
so there's a lot of different uh, ways to take advantage of the, the Kobe instead of just touring it. So Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the trail you mentioned, the Mariner's Trail, how, how long has that been in, in existence? Uh, 20 plus years. Already? Yep, and uh, that's why we're actually doing a, a phase of it right now, um, widening it, repairing it. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a, a huge asset. Like I said, it's one of the mo longest, most uninterrupted portions where you can see Lake Michigan. And, you know, Two Rivers is doing a lot of great things, too. Uh, you know, they have their new brand, Explore TR, and um, what both of our communities can provide really is uh, a weekend-long destination for folks yeah. to come and visit Mantuck and Two Rivers and to just take advantage of all the natural beauty that really is there. We saw the uh, SS Badger come in for the first time this week yes. for, uh, for the season. Always a big day for, for Manitowoc. to walk. What yeah. kind of an impact does that have on, on your city? Because this is not just a ferry to bring people from Ludington over to here and they yeah. just go uh, parts elsewhere. Right. What does that do for your city? Uh, massive. Uh, in terms of tourism, you can talk to any restaurant or, or local business downtown this is the time of year where they see the highest sales, and it's solely because of the SS Badger and the tourists that they bring in. Uh, for business, the business is starting to use it a lot more. We shipped a bunch of Broadwind Towers over uh, to avoid Chicago or going up north. It has a huge economic impact uh, that way as well. Uh, just entered her 70th year. She's 70 years old right. this year, um, and we're really excited. There's new ownership, Interlake Steamship uh, bought bought her a couple of years ago. Really excited about the, uh, what they're doing uh, to invest in the boat. Um, but it's the start of our summer every time she comes in for the first time. Uh, it's always sad when, when we see the last sailing oh, of the yeah. season. Um, but you talk to any business, uh, they, they thrive because of the SS Badger. We are back to wrap up with Manitowoc Mayor Justin Nichols right after this. We are back with Manitowoc Mayor Justin Nichols. You've got that Lincoln uh, Zoo, Lincoln yep. Park Zoo, uh, just a gem. Not every city has has a zoo. Is that being patronized by mainly locals, or is that an attraction that's bringing some outside visitors for you? Uh, a lot of locals, obviously, um, but but outside as well. It's actually a free zoo, so yep. you can just walk right in like any park and uh, see see all the animals and all the exhibits that we have there. Uh, it's actually something that we're going to be investing in quite a bit here over the next few years. We did a long-range plan. We have about a $300,000 improvement happening this year. Uh, one really neat thing is we have a trail system that's in place, that's going in place as we speak, um, that will connect the Mariner's Trail uh, to a trail system where the old Elks Club, where uh, Baycare Clinic and some apartments are now, but through that whole piece of property, we're building a bridge over the Little Mantuoc River where we're going to have a kayak launch, boat uh, docks, um, some fish stations, but that bridge will connect right into the Lincoln Park Zoo too. So folks, especially tourists, um, taking advantage of the Mariner's Trail can safely get right into Lincoln Park and the zoo. And you've got your aquatic center. What's that doing yeah. for you? What's that bringing in? Yep, the aquatic center is, of course, summertime. Uh, June 10th, I believe, is the first day that it'll be open. Um, built quite a few, couple of, 10 plus years ago now. Um, but of course, family friendly fun. We have a, a mini golf course right next to it. It's connected right to our youth baseball complex. So a lot of times in summer when we see 50, 60 teams of sixth graders from around the state come, they can just walk right, right next door to the aquatic center. So uh, always, it's, you know, as I mentioned right at the beginning too, it's the quality of life things. You know, it's not just, not just what we need to do uh, with your tax dollars, but it's the quality of life that make a community. Aquatic Center, you know, baseball diamonds for the youth are, are huge parts of that. You've, uh, you've got your fair share of beaches, obviously. Yeah. Um, do you have enough for your local clientele <laughs> and your visitors? Or uh, is this something you could further develop? That's something I really want to further develop. Yeah? Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, to Rivers, again, has beautiful Neshota Beach and Park, which is beautiful. I'm, I'm quite envious of that. Uh, we can do the same in Manitowoc, too, and, and have... You know, uh, we can complement each other as well. Um, but there are a lot more opportunities, and that's something that uh, I've, we've wanted to focus on for a long time. We have a couple of uh, really nice ones, Red Arrow Beach, um, the beach uh, out by the lighthouse to get out to the lighthouse are two uh, beautiful ones that you'll see tons of people there on a beautiful day. 
So Two Rivers has their beach, their activities. Yeah. You want to do the same. Uh, you've got kites over Lake Michigan. Yeah. Fun family event. When is that? What's all involved? That is a good question because right. that's actually Two Rivers. <laughs> that's the one in Two Rivers. That is the one in Two Rivers. But it is okay. also, it's very fun. It's exciting. They, uh, they moved it, I believe, over to their high school now because of the water levels. Um, but it is something, I will say, that Two Rivers and Mattawak, we always work so well together on a lot of our special events. We're going to have the Cool City Car Classic that starts in Mattawak, goes to, to, through Two Rivers. Uh, again, it's a place where if you come to Two Rivers for the kites, you can stroll right up to Mattawak easily and have a weekend of fun. The Two Rivers Chambers of <laughs> Commerce <laughs> yeah. thanks you, yeah, you, you for, know, for, uh, for you're that. You're welcome, Two Rivers. <laughs> I love you. Uh, RAR West Museum, finally. Yeah. Just, just today, Travel and Leisure Magazine named yes. RAR West one of the top 15 small town museums in the country. Yeah. Not many cities the size of Mattawak have a publicly owned, publicly funded art museum uh, like we do with the RAR West. We just finished a, a over million dollar project to add an elevator uh, onto the historic mansion and the museum so we can get to the third floor now of the historic mansion, uh, which will be an exhibit room, so we're actually expanding the RAR West. But you can see priceless works of art uh, right in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. We're actually getting a sculpture this year. We've done a lot on the grounds. One of my goals was Let's take the art, not just in the buildings, the four walls, but let's get it out into the community as well. So a huge asset that, yeah, one of the best places to visit. Mayor Justin Nichols, thanks so much for Thank being you. with us this morning. Much appreciated. And be sure to join us once again next Sunday morning, 730 for Newsmakers Sunday. Have a good day.